Well, it's been three months since we did any locks whatsoever. And so we're out of rhythm. We got into a rhythm in the first three months of, as they came up, we knew each other's roles and as the sort of style of the locks changed on different sections of the, or different canal networks, we got into a different rhythm. So we're gonna to have to learn that rhythm again now. Uh, there's a guy behind us coming through uh, single-handedly. He's helped us through the first one. Camille's ahead now. There's only two locks to do today, so it breaks us in nice and gently, I hope. How excited Camille is to be doing locks again after three months. Yeah? And people think I'm putting her to work. She loves it. This is the scene of the crime, if you will. Uh, after three months of cruising back in early June, this is where we properly conked out. I've all the engine style white smoke coming out everywhere and then she just pretty much gave up the ghost. And we were stuck here for six days until the legend that was Keith gave us a lift, a tow, all the way up to where we were getting the boat blacked. And uh, since then, having the boat blacked, we've obviously replaced the engine. And then three months later, we're back here. We couldn't moor in our usual spot. I call it my usual spot because we were stuck here for six days. But we're just on the other side of the boat behind me. So we made it to Polesworth. Um, so really this morning I'm hoping to turn the key and it'd be completely not like... More like...
that look like hard work? Scratching with the windlass. So now we've left the Coventry and now we're on to the Oxford and uh, Camille's been using her muscles. <laughs> now we've been through here a few times before but this is a bit weird because there's only like a very small amount of water difference between both canals. A legacy of when different companies were very protective about their stretches of the canal and the water usage. So we should be through here pretty quick. Ooh, chilly morning on the fourth morning. We've made it uh, to the exact spot that we moored in in uh, April when we were heading to Leicester. All the moorings down near the pub, as per normal, were all taken up. And it doesn't look like on a lot of this stretch there's anywhere deep enough to moor, but we knew, because we found this one last time, that there's this little spot here, and it's quite pleasant. So, a cup of coffee, I'm going to let the engine warm up a little bit, I've done all my oil checks, uh, very precious about the new engine, I should be, it's a good idea to look after it, I spent enough money on it, and let's see if we can make Braunston today. and locks and it's busy there's boats coming down and there's boats coming up and there's boats behind me and there's boats ahead of us Yesterday we stopped just a little short of Braunston, only a couple of kilometres, because it was a nice spot. I didn't want to arrive in Braunston and then have difficulty finding somewhere to moor, so we just stayed here overnight. And aside from the fact that it's really cold this morning, it's beautiful. We 
we've just pulled into Braunston and George, George is right behind me but he doesn't know we've pulled in yet. So for the first time in seven months of cruising, I can get a cappuccino while I do my water and waste. Happy day. I'm foot shoved. Who's that? You made it then? I made it. Yeah. <laughs> this is George. George well, came to my dive centre last year and now I'm coming to his coffee shop this year. Well, Happy days. <laughs> I love it. So if you're topping up with water or doing any of the unmentionables, bacon roll in the coffee, can't go wrong. Mm. 